Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Feather Friends in Flight. My name is Lisa. My name is Lucy. And you know, birds like that here, recycling that bottle, the spoonbills flying overhead, they have hopefully been inspiring people to care more about the natural world around them every day since this park opened back in 1998. Yes, and this is our favorite part of every day getting to share awesome birds like this little dinosaur with all of you. Do y'all want a closer look? We don't really wait for an answer. No, that was awesome. This is Jean. Jean is in ground hornbill and heads up. Here she comes again. You know, these birds are pretty cool. Well adapted to really eat just about anything, actually. Yeah, check out that huge beak that they have. They do use that to pick up all kinds of stuff, including snakes. They'll even eat venomous snakes. How neat is that? I Grasslands of Africa, they spot a snake, they're gonna grab it, shake it up, and slurp it back like spaghetti. It's disgusting, don't look it up on YouTube, but really cool to have all kinds of birds out there eating all kinds of weird stuff. That is true, yeah. And the Hornbill family is a pretty unique one. They've got birds from Africa, birds you can find in Asia. Here's another one right here. This is a trumpeter hornbill, same as Farby. They can be found out in Africa as well, and he is an amazing flyer. They'll dart in and around the trees. It is super cool. Yeah, and actually, we have a fun way to show this off if I have the help from some of you. Do I have two people out there from the same group who want to be trees and get a really close look at Harvey? How about right in the middle in the white Mickey Mouse t shirts? You two want to help me out? Stand up right where you're at. You're going to face each other and make a big hoop with your arms like this. Yes, perfect. Okay, check it out. This is like our canopy of trees, right? We have the forest of Africa, two trees rising a little bit above it. We got Ray helping us out in the back. What do you think, Lisa? Okay, I think this is awesome. Part whoa. Whoa, right over the top. <laughs> it felt like you yeah, even really that bird Yeah, there you go. We're going to make it a little bit wider because we have a lot of trees in between you and him. Here we go. Got it. Yeah. Hey. Uh, it helps them avoid predators and they can catch flying insects right out of the air. Yeah, okay, do y'all want to see Harvey catch a flying insect out of the air? Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's do that too. That'll be fun. Yeah, what, what's your plan? Okay, so, yeah, I didn't talk to Lisa about this, but look what I got, Lisa. And I need more explanation of what this is for. Does anyone know what this is? You said no, I appreciate the honesty. Yes, I can hear it. It's a stomp rocket, like a rocket launcher, right? But I have modified this one, so today it's going to be a grape launcher. And we're going to shoot the grape up into the air and see if Harvey can catch it. Does somebody want to help me test it out? Anyone want to help me try it? How about right here in the blue t-shirt? You want to help me out, bud? Yeah, come on down to the front. Let's give them a hand for volunteering. Hello. What's your name? Aiden, nice to meet you. Check it out. I have a grape in my pocket. We are going to put that grape in the launcher, and then the audience is going to count you down from three, okay? When we get to one, it is your job to stomp on that launch pad as hard as you can, okay? Really stomp on it like that. Shoot the grape up as high as possible. You got it? Okay. I think we are ready to go. Help me count them down. In three, two, one. Anybody over here want to play with a crow for a 20? 
out. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. We're going to bring your dollar right back to you. All you have to do is stand back up. You're going to hold your home flat this time. You should drop it off in your palm. And when he does, just wrap your fingers around it so it doesn't blow away, okay? Walker, I'm going to give that to you. Do you remember where you got it from? He sure does. He sent it right back out. And close your fingers. How about a hand to our volunteer? That was pretty cool. Yeah. And I think we can all agree the best part is somebody got money back at the theme park today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, let's get all of you an up close view of a bird. Do you want to see a hawk fly? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So get your cameras out. Get them ready to go. He's going to be all over this audience. It's going to be real cool. Um, make sure your phones and cameras are out too because you're going to have some really great photo and video opportunities. <laughs> I didn't do that, but... Yeah, you should be out in a second. Yeah, they're not really friends. Do y'all know the circle of life? Yeah. You don't want to see what that actually looks like. No. I'm going to walk the ladies from Lisa. I'll come right back out. Hold on, hold on one second. Girls, they're going to be fine with Lucy. In the meantime, oh. we are meeting Mason. Oh. Mason is a Harris hawk. Pretty cool flight, right? You can find these birds out in the southwestern United States of America. I love watching them fly like this. These birds are pretty cool. So first and foremost, most birds of prey hunt by themselves, right? Harris hawks will actually work together hunting so that they can take down items much larger than they normally would be able to by themselves, which I think is really incredible. So even things as big as a jackrabbit will work together on, again, on taking down. And with these birds, like a lot of other birds of prey, the females are going to be bigger than the males. So even if they want to take down something that's maybe underground, uh, that male will go in, flush out whatever item they're looking yep. for, the female will be out, ready to go with those strong legs, that's where her power really comes from, to take down that food item, which I think is super cool. The white banding too on them, that helps them communicate out in the wild for that distances. Mason, you're great to see you have a little tail wake goodbye. You did a great job, buddy. We'll see you later. Mason, our hair is off.
No, but you can. Okay, Lisa, hold up, Lisa. <laughs> okay, the shoe thing was pretty good, though, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, okay, I did need Lisa's help for what we were gonna do next. So, I tell you what we're gonna do. We're just gonna mix it up some more. Um, do y'all want to meet a parent? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Hold on one second. Let me see if they can bring somebody out for me. Bear with me. Hey, guys. Josh. Hey, could you bring out Pogo? I mean, either one. Pogo? Okay, thank you so much. All right, so Josh, one of the trainers backstage, is going to see if Pogo wants to come out. Pogo's this really cool little parrot. He's called a lesser sulfur crested cockatoo. Um, they're normally found in Indonesia, but Pogo has lived around people his entire life and he has learned a bunch of really cool stuff, including how to mimic some human speech. Have any of you heard of a talking parrot before? Yes. Yeah, so um, a lot of birds have the ability to mimic when they're copying sounds that they hear in their environment, right? But parrots like this are sometimes the most famous for it because occasionally when they live around people, they copy us, it sounds like talking, which is pretty cool. Josh, thank you so much for bringing him out. You are safe in the day. He is savoring that treat right now. <laughs> Look at that, yeah. So, like I said, Pogo grew up around people, lived in the home for a very long time as a pet, um, and he's learned to do a bunch of stuff, and he's learned to mimic a few different things. We'll see if he wants to show off some of that this afternoon. Hi, Pogo, do you want to start off with a hello? <laughs> That's his inside voice, nice and quiet. Do you want to hear it again? Yeah. yeah. Hello? Hello? Hi? Hello? That's <laughs> It's very little, but most cockatoos, they're not saying hello, right? They're using their outside voice. Do you want to show them that? Do you want to show them your screen? Are you ready? You're mocking me. Your beak is moving when I'm talking. <laughs> and now you're going to do whatever that is. Uh -huh. How about this one? Your screen. Are you ready? Here we go. You're going to scratch your head and then scream. <laughs> Things like hawks and owls and eagles and snakes and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! <laughs> but you know, it's because of all the predators that so many species are going extinct out in the wild. You're saying no. Are you listening? Okay. Sorry, I was saying it's because of all the predators that there's so many species that are going extinct out in the. You're saying no again. Okay. Well, then help me out. If it's not the predators, what is it? It's, yeah, is it my fault? No. Okay, then, ooh, you know what he might be trying to get at? Are you talking about humans? Okay, that actually makes a lot more sense, right? Uh, probably more so all of the problems that humans can cause, right? Uh, things like, are you okay? Pogo? What is that? Pogo, what? Okay, whoa. <laughs> you are gonna knock that perch over. Hey, are you okay? Okay, sorry, I don't know what that was. Um, yeah, problems that humans can cause. There's a lot of them, right? Things like habitat loss, misuse of chemicals, the illegal pet trade. Why are you, what is, why are you? Why? Okay, buddy, are you sure? You're paying attention. Okay, point I'm trying to make, if I can finish my sentence, is there's a lot of big problems out there, right? But, <laughs> Problems that are out of control, like a certain little cockatoo. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening. Pogo, will you get back up here? Okay, come on. Look, Pogo. Pogo, look. Look. Will you listen to me? This is serious. Okay, that's... You're listening real good. Thank you very much. Point I'm trying to make, lots of big problems. Some people have realized it though, and they're trying to do something about it. Why don't you tell everyone what you think about that? Yeah, good news. You wanna do it again? Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna let y'all in on the secret. Pogo is a very smart little bird. Are you so smart? Yes, he's the smartest one, and he's looking and listening for subtle cues to do a lot of these behaviors. You may have picked up on a few of them. Um, for instance, if I wanted to shake his head no, I could point a finger in his direction. Uh, we get that to nod his head yes. All I have to do is cross my arms in front of me. 
as soon as you're done with that tree. How about this one? Uh -huh. Sometimes if I point under the perch, he'll do a flip. We'll see if he wants to do that. How about this? Super cute. And then if I just gesture with my right arm like I'm listing things <laughs> off while I'm talking. <laughs> you get that? We don't know what that one is. <laughs> But if I don't give him a treat, he's going to do it for a really long time. So. Okay, buddy, you are doing such a good job out here. We'll end with some verbal cues. He knows a few of those as well. Like this one. Look. We look. 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 But if I don't do it, he'll be like, is she doing it? How about now? Now? Look. Listen. Say goodbye. or do any of that other wild stuff. Most parents don't do any of that, and they are extremely challenging pets to have for a lot of reasons. That's true, so did Pogo scream a whole bunch for you? That's the biggest challenge that comes with it. They also bite very hard and live a really long time. Did you tell them who Pogo is? No, do you want to? Pogo turned 53 years old this year. What? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's no joke. Yeah, it's a lot. Also, you know what we're doing? No, the whole show's out of order, so where do you want to go next? Uh, we figured for contrast, it would be really fun. Whoa! Oh my god! What? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that was, he's a lot bigger of a bird. This is Boris. He's a marabou stork. This is a 10 foot wingspan you are seeing on this bird. That's, yeah, a whole lot of birds. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no, they're cool birds. Heads up, here he comes. <laughs> I know, he's really great. But you know what, they're also really important too. These birds are scavengers, they dead stuff, right? Which sounds gross, but it's an important job to have because out in Africa, when animals die, a bird like this comes along and they're the ones helping to clean up the mess, which stops the spread of disease and keeps wild places clean. That's right, I mean, they are incredible. That was awkward, sorry, buddy. They're incredible to have around, very beneficial. I think if we recycled in our own way, with that, the world would be a much cleaner place. Boris, our mayor of store. That was exciting. Okay. Yeah, that was a really good plan. I could use more of a heads up if you're going to fly a pterodactyl at me. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so those birds are incredibly beneficial <laughs> because they're cleaning up the environment. These birds are beneficial to farmers. They'll get the bugs off of their crops. This is a crown crane. What do you all need, Frazier? Frazier Crane! And people are still really it, yeah. All right. Do you want to call them down the stage? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so normally I'm the one who calls Frazier down and beats him, but Lisa has been practicing with Frazier behind the scenes all week. Right. I think you're ready. I think you should try calling him down. I haven't called him on this show yet. I know you haven't done it out here, but it's been going well in the back, right? Sure. Okay, and the audience has been supportive. Do y'all want to see Lisa feed the crane? Yeah. Just try it. Okay. I think you're totally ready. Okay. Plus, we were talking about training, right? And this is a huge part of it, the relationship building. That's what Lisa's been working on with Frazier, right? So we typically start all of our training in the back. Lisa's been hanging out with him, giving him all of his favorite treats, spending time with him, building up what we call a trust account so that now, out here, Frazier recognizes Lisa, and he's confident and comfortable enough to fly right over all of you, straight to her on stage. So, you're in the right spot, Lisa, and as soon as he's done with all of the stuff up there, he should look right at you, and then you can give him a call down, and he almost always lands on the grass right there, okay? All right, that sounds good. Okay, please turn around. You ready? What do you think, buddy? Uh-huh. Okay. All right, here we go.
so I thought it would help Elisa if she had her own crest of golden feathers. You got me a hat. Yeah, you gotta put it on. What? Put this on. I appreciate this on, but I, I did. What do y'all think? No! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like, Come on, for the children. <laughs> that's cheating right now. It doesn't even fit. All right. You kind of look like Guy Fieri. <laughs> no, okay. This is why it's gonna help, right? Think about it. You look like one of his crown green buddies. Look. Oh, sure. Like he's flying to the other oh, platform. Oh. 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 Okay, that is awesome. Did this hat seriously help? No. <laughs> <laughs> the hat was for all of us. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so. The treats, probably working on a relationship. That was yes. Come on, you've been working with him all week. It finally paid off. That was awesome. That's Fraser Crane, everyone. Woo. Woo. And 2003 Justin Timberlake, everyone. <laughs> Spirit Halloween's having some really good sales right now, y'all. <laughs> okay, the hat is a little bit silly. Obviously, that's not how we train the birds, right? But. The relationship building is a key part of it. That is how we're able to bring the birds out and share them with all of you and hopefully inspire everyone to think about the bigger relationship we can all create with the natural world and the impact we have on wildlife every single day. That's right, and there is no better example, in my opinion, of the way that we have positively impact the environment than the story of the national symbol of the United States of America, the bald eagle. Everyone, I'd like you to be hope. Now, Hope was actually injured in the wild when she was younger and deemed not releasable. So she came to live with us to help tell the story of how we almost lost these birds forever. It wasn't that long ago, bald eagle's numbers dropped so low, they were actually placed on the endangered species list, and a lot of people feared future generations weren't going to see them in the wild anymore. But something amazing happened. People took notice of that call, and they took action. They started cleaning up the waterways where the bald eagles fished, and they stopped using a chemical pesticide called DDT, which was a major reason for their decline. Yeah, and the cool part of that is it was people, like everyone here, who made the difference and helped bring the bald eagle back from the brink of extinction. That's right. All the efforts paid off, the numbers of bald eagles started to climb, and they were officially taken off the endangered species list. an amazing conservation success story and it's your testament of the power people can have to protect wildlife. Absolutely. The bald eagle story is one to always remember because there are still many animals in wild places who really need our help, including these birds. This is Link and he's a blue-throated macaw. Blue-throated macaws are one of the rarest species of macaw found out in the wild today. They're only found in Bolivia and estimates have less than 300 individuals out there. Yeah, which it is a really low number, but it's not all bad news. We've teamed up with an organization called the World Parrot Trust, and they are breeding blue-throated macaws, whose offspring will be released into Bolivia to join up with the populations there, so that hopefully one day we'll get to see skies filled with blue-throated macaws. And that will be an amazing sight to see, and it doesn't end there. There are so many amazing birds out there with their own unique stories, like coming up ah! right here. This is Guinness. He is a total genius. There's a lot of May your hearts take flight and your spirits soar forever. Namaste. Wonderful rest of the day exploring Disney's Animal Kingdom.